There is another type of trial or temptation that comes from within, and that is the solicitation to do evil, to be tempted from within, because we have a traitor that lives inside, if you haven't noticed. Uh, you know, we have a fallen nature, and that fallen nature is drawn to things that would satisfy it outside of the will of God. So he says, this is what you have to understand. There are trials. They are for our benefit. There are things that are governed by God, things that come our way. And he said, and blessed is the man or woman that endures temptation, not escapes it, but endures these trials because when he's tried, he's going to receive the crown of life. There's good that comes from this. But don't let any man say when he is tempted, he is tempted of God. It's important because what happens is the trial, whatever pressure it brings, we can get frustrated, we can get disheartened, we can get disillusioned. If God loves me, why is this going on? Well, why should I just go out and drink? Why should I just go out and do this? Why should I just slug this guy? Why should I just, you know, there's, then there's a temptation inwardly to respond the wrong way to the outward trials that come into our life. Look, and, and it says every man slash woman is tempted. Everybody in this room. There's nobody in this room that doesn't deal with temptation. If I say, if, if you're here today and you never deal with temptation, raise your hand. Well, then you're dealing with the temptation of pride if you raise your hand. So there's nobody here that doesn't deal with temptation. It's, it's part of the Christian experience. And it's part of the fact that we have that fallen nature that we're not you know, to let reign, Paul says in Romans 6, in our lives. This is what we want to understand about temptation, and it's important. Uh, first of all, everybody here who loves the Lord, who's walking with the Lord, wants to do their best for the Lord, you need to understand that temptation is a part of our lives. Doesn't mean there's something wrong with you. Temptation is part of our experience. Secondly, it's important for the condemned Christian that Satan is condemning and lying to, saying, well, if you were really God's kid, you wouldn't be wrestling with this all the time. You know, it's important for the condemned Christian to understand that temptation comes to all of us. They're not isolated. It's important then for the compromised Christian to understand temptation so that they can't point the finger at anybody else. Says here, you can't blame God, you can't blame anybody. If you've entered into sin, if you've let temptation run its course in your life, the problem is you. Ain't nobody else. It's you. You can't point the finger at anybody else. It's you. The compromised Christian needs to understand that. The unbeliever needs to understand that if temptation is unrecognized and undealt with by the blood of Christ, they need to understand that ultimately they will end up eternally dead and separated from God. Important. And in all of this, for all of us to see the nature of God is not in keeping with temptations that people wrestle with. That's not him. 